In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Dear sisters and brothers, on this most sacred night in which our Lord Jesus Christ passed over from death to life, the Church calls upon her sons and daughters scattered throughout the world to come together to watch and pray. If we keep the memorial of the Lord's Paschal Solemnity in this way, listening to his word and celebrating his mysteries, then we shall have sure hope of sharing his triumph over death and living with him in God. May the light of Christ rising in glory dispel the darkness of our hearts and minds. May the Lord be with you. May the Lord be in your heart and on your lips, that you may proclaim his paschal praise worthily and well. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Exalt, let them exalt the hosts of heaven. Exalt, let angel ministers of God exalt. Let the trumpet of salvation sound aloud the mighty King's trumpet. Be glad, let earth be glad, as glory floods her. Ablaze with light from her eternal King. Let all corners of the earth be glad, knowing an end to gloom and dark. Rejoice, let Mother Church also rejoice, arrayed with the lightning of his glory. Let his holy building shake with joy, filled with the mighty voices of the people. Therefore, dearest friends, 
standing in the awesome glory of this holy light. Invoke with me, I ask you, the mercy of God Almighty, that he who has been pleased to number me, though unworthy, among the Levites, may pour into me his light unshadowed, that I may sing this candle's perfect praises. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just with ardent love of mind and heart, and with devoted service of our voice to acclaim our God invisible, the Almighty Father, and Jesus Christ our Lord, his Son, his only begotten, who for our sake paid Adam's debt to the eternal Father, and pouring out his own dear blood, wiped clean the record of our ancient sinfulness. These then are the feasts of Passover, in which is slain the Lamb, the one true Lamb, whose blood anoints the doorposts of believers. This is the night when once you let our forebears, Israel's children, from slavery in Egypt, and made them pass dry shod through the Red Sea. This is the night that with the pillar of fire banished the darkness of sin. This is the night that even now throughout the world sets Christian believers apart from worldly vices and from the gloom of sin, leading them to grace and joining them to his holy ones. This is the night when Christ broke the prison bars of death and rose victorious from the underworld. Our birth would have been no gain had we not been redeemed. Oh, 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 oh wonder of your humble care for us. Oh, love, O oh, charity beyond all telling, to ransom a slave, you gave away your son. O oh, truly necessary sin of Adam, destroyed completely by the death of Christ. O oh, happy fall that earned so great, so glorious a Redeemer. O oh, truly blessed night, worthy alone to know the time and hour when Christ rose from 
the underworld. This is the night of which it is written. The night shall be as bright as day. Dazzling is the night for me and full of gladness. The sanctifying power of this night dispels wickedness, washes faults away, restores innocence to the fallen, and joy to mourners, drives down hatred, fosters concord, and brings down the mighty. On this your night of grace, O Holy Father, accept this candle, a solemn offering, the work of bees and of your servants' hands, an evening sacrifice of praise, this gift from your most holy church. But now we know the praises of this pillar, which glowing fire ignites for God's honor, a fire into many flames divided, yet never dim, but sharing of its light. For it is fed by melting wax, Drawn up by mother bees to build a torch so precious. Oh, 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 truly blessed night, when things of heaven are wed to those of earth and divine to the human. Therefore, O oh Lord, we pray you. That this candle, hallowed to the honor of your name, may persevere undimmed to overcome the darkness of this night. Receive it as a pleasing fragrance, and let it mingle with the light of heaven. May this flame be found, still burning by the morning star, the one morning star who never sets. Christ, your Son, coming back from death's domain, has shed his peaceful light on humanity and lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Dear brothers and sisters, now that we have begun our solemn vigil, let us listen with quiet hearts to the Word of God. Let us meditate on how God in times past saved his people, and in these the last days he sent us his Son as our Redeemer. Let us pray that our God may complete this paschal work of salvation by the fullness of redemption. reading from the book of Genesis. In the beginning, when God created the heavens and the earth, God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness. Let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, the birds of the air, and the cattle, and over all the wild animals, 
and on the creatures that crawl on the ground. God created man in his image. He created the image of God. He created them. Male and female, he created them. God blessed them, saying, Be fertile and multiply. Fill the earth and subdue it. Have dominion over the fish of the sea, the birds of the air, and all the living things that move on the earth. God also said, See, I give you every seed-bearing plant all over the earth, and every tree that has seed-bearing fruit on it will be your food. And to all the animals of the land, all the birds of the air, and all living creatures that crawl on the ground, I give all the green plants for food. And so it happened. God looked at everything he had made and found it very good. The word of the Lord. Thanks be Thanks to God. God. Exodus. The Lord said to Moses, Why are you crying out to me? Tell the Israelites to go forward. And you lift up your staff, and with your hand outstretched over the sea, split the sea in two, that the Israelites may pass through it on dry land. But I will make the Egyptians so obstinate that they will go in after them. Then I will receive glory through Pharaoh and all his army, his chariots and charioteers. The Egyptians shall know that I am the Lord when I receive glory through Pharaoh and his chariots and charioteers. The angel of God who had been leading Israel's camp now moved and went around behind them. The column of cloud also, leaving the front, took up its place behind them, so that it came between the camp of the Egyptians and that of Israel. But the cloud now became dark, and thus the night passed, without the rival camps coming any closer together all night long. Then Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and the Lord swept the sea with a strong east wind throughout the night, so it turned into dry land. When the water was thus divided, the Israelites marched into the midst of the sea on dry land. 
with the water like a wall to their right and to their left. The Egyptians followed in pursuit. All Pharaoh's horses and chariots and charioteers went after them, right into the midst of the sea. In the night watch just before dawn, the Lord cast through the column of the fiery cloud upon the Egyptian force a glance that threw it into a panic. And so he clogged their chariot's wheels that they could hardly drive. With that, the Egyptians sounded the retreat before Israel, because the Lord was fighting for them against the Egyptians. Then the Lord told Moses, Stretch out your hand over the sea, that the water may flow back upon the Egyptians, upon their chariots and their charioteers. So Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and at dawn the sea flowed back to its normal depth. The Egyptians were fleeing head-on toward the sea when the Lord hurled them into its midst. As the waters flowed back, it covered the chariots and the charioteers of Pharaoh's whole army, which had followed the Israelites into the sea. Not a single one of them escaped. But the Israelites had marched on dry land through the midst of the sea, with water, water like a wall to their right and to their left. Thus the Lord saved Israel on that day from the power of the Egyptians. When Israel saw the Egyptians lying dead on the seashore, they beheld the great power that the Lord had shown against the Egyptians. They feared the Lord and believed in him and in his servant Moses. Then Moses and the Israelites sang this song to the Lord. I will sing to the Lord, for he is gloriously triumphant. Horse and chariot he is cast into the sea. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Be to God. by the power of your right hand. Now you bring about as the salvation of the nations through waters of rebirth. Grant, we pray, that the whole world may become children of Abraham and inherit the dignity of Israel's birthright through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Ezekiel. The word of the Lord came to me, saying, Son of man, when the house of Israel lived in their land, they defiled it by their conduct and deeds. Therefore I poured out my fury upon them, because of the blood that they poured out on the ground, 
and because they defiled it with idols. I scattered them among the nations, dispersing them over foreign lands. According to their conduct and deeds, I judged them. But when they came among the nations, wherever they came, they served to profane my holy name, because it was said of them, These are the people of the Lord, yet they had to leave their land. So I relented because of my holy name, which the house of Israel profaned. Among the nations where they came, therefore to the house of Israel, thus says the Lord God, Do not for your sakes do I act, house of Israel, but for the sake of my holy name, which you profaned among the nations to which you came. I will prove the holiness of my great name, profaned among the nations, in whose midst you have profaned it. Thus the nation shall know that I am the Lord, says the Lord God, when in their sight I will prove my holiness through you. For I will take you away from among the nations, gather you from all the foreign lands, and bring you back to your own land. I will sprinkle clean water upon you, to cleanse you from all your impurities, and from all your idols I will cleanse you. I will give you a new heart, and place a new spirit within you, taking from your bodies your stony hearts, and giving you natural hearts. I will put my spirit within you, and make you live by my statutes, careful to observe my decrees. You shall live in the land I gave your fathers, you shall be my people, and I will be your God. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Let us pray. O oh God of unchanging power and eternal life, look with favor on the wondrous mystery of the whole church, and serenely accomplish the work of human salvation, which you plan from all eternity. May the whole world know and see that what was cast down is raised up, what had become old is made new, and all things are restored to integrity through Christ, just as by him they came into being, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen.
O oh God, who made this most sacred night radiant with the glory of the Lord's resurrection, stir up in your church a spirit of adoption, so that, renewed in body and mind, we may render you undivided service through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, are you unaware that we who were baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? We were indeed buried with him through baptism into death, so that just as Christ was raised from the dead, by the glory of the Father, we too might live in newness of life. For if we have grown into union with him through a death like his, we shall also be united with him in his resurrection. We know that our old self was crucified with him, so that our sinful body might be done away with, that we might no longer be slavery to sin. For a dead person has been absolved from sin. If we then have died with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him. We know that Christ, raised from the dead, dies no more. Death no longer has power over him. As to his death, he died to sin once and for all. As to his life, he lives for God. Consequently, you too must think of yourselves as being dead to sin and living for God in Christ Jesus. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks. 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 from heaven, approached, rolled back the stone, and sat upon it. His appearance was like lightning, and his clothing was white as snow. The guards were shaken with fear of him, and became like dead men. Then the angel said to the woman in reply, Do not be afraid. I know that you are seeking Jesus, the crucified. He is not here, for he has been raised just as he said. Come and see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples, he has been raised from the dead and he is going before you to Galilee. There you will see him. 
Behold, I have told you. Then they went away quickly from the tomb, fearful, yet overjoyed, and ran to announce this to the disciples. And behold, Jesus met them on their way and greeted them. They approached, embraced his feet, and did him homage. Then Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. Go tell my brothers to go to Galilee, and there they will see me. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, to you Lord, Lord Jesus, Jesus Christ. Christ. My sisters and brothers, welcome to St. Peter Cathedral and this live streaming of the celebration of Jesus' resurrection. We're so happy that you are able to join us this evening. In the name of Father Michael Ferrick, the rector of the cathedral, Father Michael Polinek, Father Christopher Singer, Deacon Jeff Swanson, Deacon Ray Sabina, and in my own name, we wish all of you and your families the grace and peace of a blessed Easter. In these uncertain and unprecedented times, if there is one thing we all need is the grace and peace that Easter gives us. Just a moment ago, we heard from Matthew's Gospel the story of how Mary of Magna and the other Mary visited the tomb of Jesus early in the morning on the first day, only to find the stone covering the tomb had been rolled away and the tomb empty. The two Marys, at the direction of the angel, ran to tell Peter and the disciples the scriptures tell us that they struggled to make sense of what they saw. While the events of the first Easter morning make sense to us today, there is no reason for us to believe that Mary, Peter, or any of the first followers of Jesus were anything but confused, heartbroken, and powerless to sort out all that had happened to their teacher and friend. A tension existed between what they experienced on Calvary and what they now saw and heard. Pope Francis explained this tension best in his reflections upon the resurrection. To experience the hope of Easter, we have to be willing to enter into the mystery of God. The mystery demands that we not be afraid of reality, that we not be locked into ourselves, that we not flee from what we fail to understand, that we not close our eyes to problems, or deny them, that we not dismiss our questions. To enter into the mystery of God, we need the humility to recognize who we really are, creatures with struggles and weaknesses, sinners in need of forgiveness. In short, we need to appreciate our powerlessness and our absolute dependence upon God. 
The recognition of this reality in our lives has the ability to do far more than might ever imagine or believe possible. It has the ability to open our hearts to encounter the very life of the risen Jesus. In fact, our powerlessness and dependence upon God become the seedbed for faith. A faith born not from some sort of proof, but born within the hearts that are open to the presence of God. A faith characterized at times by uncertainty and doubt, but a faith nevertheless that leads to an unshakable trust in a person, the person of Jesus. This year has proven to be a sobering one for all of us. The tragedy of a pandemic, the loss of our ability to physically come together to worship in the most holy and sacred time of the year, has left many of us bewildered, unsettled, angry. As we try to make sense of, these, of this moment, Christians have always struggled to understand how the miracle of God's saving grace could possibly intersect the broken and fragile lives of us all. First of all, the images that speak to our faith, the cross of Jesus, stands, above, stands out above all the others. Why? Because the suffering Jesus speaks to our own suffering, pain, and grief. And the reason Jesus, born from the same cross, alone has the power to fulfill the deepest longing of our hearts that yearn for meaning and purpose, for life and peace, for God. The cross continues to stand with its enduring promise of rebirth and life. This is Easter. May this blessed day enable us to see and understand that our only hope in life is found when we acknowledge our powerlessness and are wise enough to trust in the great mystery of the suffering, death, and resurrection of Jesus, living among us and in his church. Dear brothers and sisters, through the Paschal Mystery, we have been buried with Christ in baptism, so that we may walk with him in newness of life. And so, now that our Lenten observances are, is concluded, let us now, let us renew the promises of holy baptism, by which we once renounce Satan and his works, and promise to serve God in his holy church. And so I ask you, do you renounce Satan? I do. I do. And all his works? I do. I do. And all his empty promises? I, I do. do. Do you believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth? I, I, I do. do. 
Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was born of the Virgin Mary, suffered death and was buried, rose again from the dead, and is seated at the right hand of the Father? I do. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting? I do. And may Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given us new birth by, the whole, by water and the Holy Spirit, bestow on us forgiveness of our sins, keep us by his grace in Christ Jesus our Lord for eternal life. Amen. Amen. sisters and brothers, filled with pastoral joy, let us pray more earnestly to God that he who graciously listened to the prayers and supplications of his beloved Son may now be pleased to look upon us in our loneliness. For the Church, that we may proclaim the hope and promise of Christ's resurrection in everything we do, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all of us in this assembly, that we may always rejoice in God's resurrection and realize the salvation He won for us, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. prayer. For prayerful openness in our young people, that they will see their vocation discernment as a call to love the Lord and respond generously to His choice in them, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. prayer. That our beloved dead may be rewarded with eternal life in the heavenly kingdom. Especially for William Hoppy and family whom we remember at this Mass, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. prayer. For the victims of the coronavirus, people affected by the quarantine, doctors and scientists working for a vaccine, that God may watch over them and guide them and bring them comfort. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord, Lord hear our prayer. O oh God, who know that our life in this present age is subject to suffering and need, hear the desires of those who cry to you and receive the prayers of those who believe in you through Christ our Lord. Amen.
pray, my sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice from your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Accept, we ask, O Lord, the prayers of your people with the sacrificial offerings that what has begun in the Paschal Mysteries may, by the working of your power, bring us to the healing of eternity through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with, and with your, your spirit. spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It, it is right and just. just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord. But on this night, above all, to lodge you yet more gloriously, when Christ our Passover has been crucified. For he is the true Lamb, who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying, he has destroyed our death, and by rising, restored our life. Therefore, overcome with pastoral joy, every land, every people, exalts in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic host sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. <laughs> In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your temple until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope and Lawrence our Bishop and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, 
and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the, for the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And, and with, with your spirit. spirit. moment of communion, since you are not physically present, 
to receive Jesus in the Eucharist. Please pray with me that we may receive him spiritually through the spiritual communion prayer. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Pour out on us, O Lord, the spirit of your love, and in your kindness make those you have nourished by this Paschal Sacrament one in mind and heart, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and with, and your, with spirit. your spirit. Bow down for the blessing. May Almighty God bless you through this to, through today's Easter solemnity, and in his compassion, defend you from every assault of sin. Amen. Amen. And may he, who restores you to eternal life in the resurrection of his only begotten Son, endow you with the prize of immortality. Amen. Amen. Now that these days of the Lord's passion have drawn to a close, May you, who celebrate the gladness of the Paschal Feast, come with Christ's help and exulting in spirit to the feasts that are celebrated in eternal joy. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit remain with you forever. Amen. Amen. Go in peace.